Kerr9000's Game Room. Hi, it's Kerr9000 and welcome back to another SNES review. This time I'm going to be talking about Donkey Kong Country 3, Dixie Kong's Double Trouble. Or as it's known in Japan, Super Donkey Kong 3, Mystery of Kremis Island. And it is, surprise surprise, a platforming video game developed by Rare and published by Nintendo for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System in 1996. The game was the final instalment in the Donkey Kong Country series to appear on that console and it very much sticks to the formula set out by the first game. The game was also ported to the Game Boy Advance in 2005 but it had a different soundtrack and added features. I guess this makes it one of those games which added to the SNES based library on the Game Boy Advance making people often refer to that machine as a sort of portable SNES. So I'm glad it got re-released like this because I don't think it got the attention it deserved at its time of release. I would definitely argue that the sales of the game were hurt by the release of the Nintendo 64 console which came out a few months before this game. Sure the original PlayStation came out around the time of the second Donkey Kong game but that was a rival machine and some people loved Nintendo so much that they wouldn't jump ship. But this game launched around the time of Nintendo's superior hardware resulting in this game having even lower sales than the previous entry. Even I didn't really pay any attention to this back in the day, I played it much later. I must admit though, even though it didn't do the numbers, I think it deserves, it did far better than one might expect given the circumstances and Nintendo could definitely consider it a success. I have to admit I don't have a big story about how I came to play this game, I don't think I even touched it on release, I don't think I knew anybody with it, none of my friends got it, none of the little independent shops I knew were letting people play it, heck most of them didn't even seem to be stocking it. I wasn't preoccupied with the Nintendo 64 either as I didn't get my first one of those till I think over a year after its release and then it was a second hand machine which I sold about a year later to help fund my second PC for doing college work. I guess really I was preoccupied with my PlayStation at this point in time. I was probably playing Tekken 2 and Kingsfield and stuff of that ilk. I got my first copy of Donkey Kong Country 3 as an American version um, alongside the other games in the trilogy as American copies and I can't pin down in my mind exactly when I got them but it was a Christmas present. Um, I think the GameCube would have been the main console under my television at that time. So, uh, But my SNES was set up in another room. And once dinner was out of the way, I had a bash at this game. And that would be my first proper experience of it. Okay, so back to reviewing the game. In this game, Dixie Kong has got a promotion from sidekick status to the main hero. And her sidekick is her baby cousin, Kitty Kong. This is something I always found a little weird with the Donkey Kong Country games. Mario is the hero in the first Mario, the hero in the second Mario, and pretty much every Mario moving on. Apart from the odd time he gets captured or goes missing, and Luigi fills in. But in the Donkey Kong games, in the actual numbered sequel, Donkey Kong is gone and his sidekicks become the hero. And then a sidekick's sidekick becomes a hero. Uh, so yeah. It's a little strange, but, you know, that's what we've got. I never really got on with the Dixie character. I know a lot of people complain that Diddy was a product of board meetings and throwing something that was hip and cool at the time, a cape-wearing, boombox-carrying, dancing, you know, promotional tool. But I liked him. I really did, and... Uh, Dixie just felt like a let's have a female Kong so we aren't seen as sexist and girls may not like this sort of thing. Maybe other people feel different to me on this and I guess beyond a mild annoyance it doesn't really alter the game. Kitty Kong also feels a little barrel scrapey to me to be fair. Um, a bit like the scrappy do of the franchise. Personally I'd kind of hope that they would have gone a little bigger with things. That we would have had some Super Mario 2 Mario USA going on with like four characters you can select from. All with their own strengths and weaknesses. Okay I'm aware that I've gone a little negative here. But let's just stop and admit that the first game 
in this service particularly shocked the living heck out of all of us. People assumed it was headed for the N64 and didn't think the humble SNES could handle something like that. So it's a bit negative of me to expect giant leaps again and again, given that this is on the same hardware. What we did get was a service which constantly provided a high level of entertainment and tried to provide more and more content, despite the fact that it must have been pushing the ever-living crud out of the system. So let's get on to the positives. The level design in Donkey Kong Country 3 gives players more opportunities to interact with the environment than the layout in the previous games did. Sure, the game still contains the standard mix of platform, jumping, enemy killing, rope climbing and barrel blasting. Uh, blasting into walls and floors to smash them. But now there are also switches to pull, rocket barrels to ride in and other little added bits. There are a few forced scrolling stages too that involve minecarts, sleds etc. Which adds a great change of pace every now and then. Riding on top of and transforming into animal friends once again comes into play. But there are a few new faces I'd hear here. One area where I'd argue this game improves upon is the bosses. They seem to be a little bit more creative than those in the previous DKC games. And I'd also say that in some cases the way you dispatch them is a little bit more interesting. But I don't want to give spoilers here as uh, people really need to give this third entry a try. It can be argued that the changes I've mentioned on top of the already high quality found across the whole series make this third instalment the best of the trilogy even if nothing much more than a cookie cutter sequel with the expected added layer of chocolate sprinkles. The game has amazing graphics, great sound, bags of replay value both in the way there's lots to collect but also in the way that it's fun to play so you won't mind playing it whether you've finished it or not. Do I recommend it? Well that depends on if you own the original Donkey Kong Country. If you don't own that game then that's the perfect starting point to this adventure and you can probably pick this up for a lot cheaper than this game. If you own that or have finished that game though and you want more, yes, get this game and grab number two while you're at it. It is important that to mention that the Game Boy Advance version does have added levels and features, so if you're a Game Boy Advance fan, you might want to consider that version. Personally, I'm glad to own the SNES one as it's great to have all three games across the same platform. This game was available on the Wii U for, as a virtual console game, but that has long gone and I don't think it's actually made it to the switch yet I could be wrong if you want a cart based copy of this last time I looked you were looking around about the 25 pound price point for a loose cart although I have seen it as high as 55 pound in some places if you have the ability to play imports then getting a loose Japanese cart might be the easiest way to go as I've seen them as low as £7 occasionally although people do try and push for 20 for them sometimes. I do wonder if demand for this and other Rare games will increase now with the likes of Rare Replay wetting people's appetites. It wouldn't be a bad thing if compilations like that encourage people to look for other Rare games that didn't make it on there for various copyright and space issues. I also hope that uh, with Rare Replay having done so well that Microsoft might take another look at Rare and pumping money back into it and getting it to do something new and interesting but uh, who knows. Anyway thank you for watching my video and join me when I review something else. Anyway thanks for watching. Later, taters. Hi it's Kerr9000 I'd just like to say thank you for making it to the end of my video. I've got lots of stuff on my channel, my horror house doing horror reviews, my game room where I talk about video games sci-fi station, my diet corner videos, all kinds of stuff. I can also be found on the Retro Gamer U forum and the JRK forum which are both great places full of great people and some great video game conversations. At the end of this video there'll be a little icon to tick if you want to subscribe, a link to a video and a link to one of my playlists. I'd also like to recommend the wonderful talented Just Jessica 1988 on TikTok who does a lot of diet videos and is my supportive partner. Thank you once again for watching my video and particularly if you follow me, thank you for all of your support. Have a great rest of your day. Laters, taters.